It's time to start making reservations for gatherings in Metro Parks, Tacoma Parks. Plans are in the works for a rapid transit bus system, and we've got some exciting news from the Tacoma Public Library. All that and more coming up next on Tacoma Report. Hi and welcome to this edition of Tacoma Report. I'm Angie Foster. It's a situation that unfortunately doesn't seem to change. Blood supplies continue to be down nationwide and that's a huge concern for our local organization, Cascade Regional Blood Services. The lack of donors due to the pandemic have made keeping the blood supply at normal levels a challenge and officials are concerned that it might continue for a while. Blood cannot be manufactured, right? We cannot go to a pharmaceutical company and ask them to manufacture blood. It must be donated from another person. And so it's so critically important for us as a community to donate blood and have that healthy blood supply for people in the hospital who need it. Seasonally during the summertime, we typically see a drop in donation and we are really worried that that is going to um, get really bad this summer because people just are not engaging as much as they have been in the past and summer like i said tends to be um kind of our, our slower season anyways and in the past that had a lot to do with the schools um and since we haven't had the schools this year and there's been typically less donations um, we're really thinking that it's going to be challenging donating blood is extremely safe COVID procedures are in place and the entire process takes about an hour. All types of blood are desperately needed, but they really could use O positive, B negative, and AB blood types. To learn more about when and where you can give this gift of life, go to the Cascade Regional Blood Services website. A lot of exciting news is being generated by the Tacoma Public Library. There are now four branches that are open to limited capacity for visits by appointment or walk-in. In March, the Fern Hill and Swayze branches reopened, and recently both the Kobotich branch, which is located in Northeast Tacoma, and also the Moore branch on South 56th Street began allowing people into the buildings. Library officials are hoping that as COVID conditions improve, more branches throughout the city will be able to welcome patrons. In addition, the Northwest Room is now open for visits by appointment, but the main downtown branch will remain closed through the fall of 2022 due to facility upgrades and reorganization. More information can be found by going to the Tacoma Public Library website. The Tacoma Public Library also announced that it is now fine free. The library adopted a policy to permanently eliminate overdue fines collection on late items. The library will also clear all overdue fines on patrons' accounts. This gives patrons who have been avoiding visiting the library due to outstanding charges the opportunity to start fresh. It should be noted, though, that there is a difference between fines and fees at the library. Fines are charges accrued for overdue items, and fees are charged for lost or damaged items. The library will continue to charge fees for lost and damaged items, and these fees vary at item type. More information can be found by going to the Tacoma Public Library website. And in other library news, the Tacoma Public Library, Tacoma Mayor Victoria Woodards, and the Tacoma Urban League have announced the theme and title selected for Tacoma Reads 2021. This citywide reading program seeks to unite the community in dialogue around contemporary themes through reading a common text. This year, the series will focus on race, social justice, and healing. The Tacoma Reads 2021 titles include The Adult Title is Cast, The Origins of Our Discontents by Isabel Wilkerson. The Teen's Young Adult Title is A Good Kind of Trouble by Lisa Moore Romay. And the Kids and Family Title is The Day You Begin by Jacqueline Woodson, illustrated by Rafael Lopez. For the latest information on Tacoma Reads, visit the Tacoma Public Library's website. A project is getting underway for the South Sound's first bus rapid transit. Stacy Ellifrit has more on this line that will run from Tacoma to Spanaway and back again. Bus rapid transit, or BRT, is different than a regular bus line. It's faster, more reliable, and arrives more often. From paying the fare before boarding, raised platforms for easier mobility device access, 
to multiple doors for boarding, to bringing a bike on the bus, everything about the BRT is designed for a faster trip. It feels more like a light rail system, so it'll have stations rather than just your typical bus stop with a sign. It'll have stations that have weather protection. Um, there'll be signs there that will say the next bus is coming in five minutes. Buses come every 10 to 15 minutes, so you really don't need a schedule. You can just go to the station and the next bus will arrive. They also help with congestion. Every BRT vehicle can take about 90 cars off the road. The vehicles will also look different as they are articulated buses that will be branded for the whole system. Last fall, our Board of Commissioners selected the name Stream for our BRT system. And what that means is that is a that is a name for the whole system. It's not just for this line. We're going to have future BRT lines as well, but that's our system name. We'll have different indicators for different lines. It might be a letter or a number or a name. Currently, Pierce Transit is at about 60% design on the project. We're also finalizing where the bus will travel in the roadway. So in some cases, it will be in the right lane with mixed use traffic and the stations will be on the right. In some cases, it'll be in the left lane and the stations might be in the median on the left side. In, in some cases, not a whole lot of the line, but in some instances, it will travel through the median itself. So that will become dedicated bus or emergency vehicle travel lane. This line will run along the 14.4 mile portion of Pacific Avenue SR7 between downtown Tacoma and Spanaway. The corridor is currently served by Pierce Transit Route 1. Construction could begin as early as next year, and we hope to open sometime in 2024, depending on construction schedules and permitting and all of that. And then finally, we're, we're looking right now, um, we're just getting started on a bus rapid transit expansion study. So we're hoping to do several more BRT lines, maybe on the routes, this is the Route 1, so maybe on the routes 2, 3, and 4, which are our major lines, but this study will really inform that, you know, where is it most needed? This is a $170 million project, which is typical for a BRT line. It's important to note that this is not, these are not funds that, could, that are coming from um, Pierce Transit almost exclusively. They are uh, grant funds. And so this is not something that could be used to fund other local bus service. Um, there's already $95 million committed to the project. Uh, including about 60 million that came from the Sound Transit 3 ballot measure. Plus we have some state funding and other grants. Outreach has been ongoing for this project over the last few years. An open house for the community to learn more and get involved will be happening later this year. People can expect to hear a variety of things, kind of a project overview, the maps of how the bus will travel up and down the corridor station design so people will get a look at what that station is going to look like in their neighborhood if they're along the route uh, the branding including that stream logo that i mentioned timelines for the project we'll talk about that how we're working with property owners that might be impacted because in some cases we will need to acquire some property that um, might be parking for someone so we'll be working very closely with property owners to help mitigate any of those impacts as best we can Pierce Transit wants the community to stay connected and offers a sign-up for email and text message updates on their website. Subscribers can receive up-to-date information on BRT and more. We just hope people will really get involved. Um, you know, this is going to be a really big first step for Pierce County and just an exciting new uh, way to get around. It's going to be really easy and quick and um, it'll be a different experience for people. For Tacoma Report, I'm Stacey Ellifrit. To subscribe to email updates and to find out more about the BRT project, visit RideBRT.com. The Tacoma Planning Commission will hold a public hearing on June 16th at 5.30 p.m. on Zoom to provide comment on the scoping of applications received for the 2022 amendment process. This is for the One Tacoma Comprehensive Plan and Land Use Regulatory Code. The city received three applications for this year's process. For more information about the applications, go to the webpage. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll show you why the trees in Tacoma's Wright Park are so important. Stay with us. Welcome back to Tacoma Report. I'm Angie Foster. If you like spending time outdoors, especially at Point Defiance Park, you'll be glad to know that Metro Parks Tacoma is now accepting picnic shelter reservations online. These popular spots were closed down last year due to the pandemic, but they are now open and you can reserve one. 
The Owen Beach and Gig Harbor Viewpoint shelters won't be available to reserve this year, and catered events in the picnic pavilions are not available at this time. Prices to reserve the picnic shelters vary depending on how large they are, and reservations can be made up to one year in advance. COVID-19 guidelines are in place for Metro Parks Tacoma locations. To reserve a picnic site or for more information on Metro Parks Tacoma facilities, visit them online. As spring begins to wind down and summer is just around the corner, the weather is getting a lot nicer. A lot of us are spending more time outdoors and the parks in Tacoma are a great place to enjoy nature. Lane Ficke takes a look at Wright Park, one of the oldest parks in the area, and tells us about a certain aspect that makes it so special. There are more than 600 trees in Wright Park made up of 145 different species. This land, which was donated by Charles Wright in 1886 to the city of Tacoma, now encompasses 27 acres. It's more than a park, it's an arboretum. Many of these trees, there were 110 varieties planted originally uh, around 1890. Um, they were exotic, uh, which arboretums don't have to be exotic, but this one is. Uh, many of these trees are not native to the Pacific Northwest, so they were a treat, they were rare, they were something that people could come and look at and learn about other parts of the world. When you have trees this old and some very rare, special maintenance is required to preserve their place in Tacoma history. We have an urban forester and he uh, provides a individual um, evaluation of each one of the trees, every, a minimum of every five years, more often if it's um, under a close watch. Um, we do pruning to be preventative for some uh, problems. Uh, we have the Teddy o Roosevelt Oak that needed to have a major canopy reduction a few years ago in order to keep the likelihood of it failing down. We also have uh, cabling installed in one of the red oaks down by the playground because of the uh, importance of the target that would happen if it did were to fail. Metro Parks Tacoma has developed a self-guided walking tour called the Champion Tree Tour. Champion trees are the biggest of their species and there are 20 of them located in Wright Park. You can download a map at the Metro Parks Tacoma website or you can pick one up at the W.W. Seymour Botanical Conservatory in the park. Whether it's a picnic lunch, taking a leisurely walk with a friend, or reliving your youth on the swings, the trees at Wright Park play a vital role in making this go-to place stay at the top of places to be. For Tacoma Report, I'm Lane Ficke. You'll find both native and exotic trees in Wright Park. And with the trees changing throughout the seasons, the park takes on a different look each time you visit. With the school year ending, summer vacation is right around the corner. The Tacoma Police Department urges parents to discuss summer safety with their children and take steps to keep them safe. When bicycling, skateboarding, or skating, children should wear proper safety gear, including a helmet. Never allow children to swim alone and have an attentive adult nearby. Instruct children that if they find a firearm, not to touch it. Tell them to alert an adult or police officer immediately. Remind children that anyone they don't know is a stranger. Tell them not to talk to or take food like candy from a stranger. They should never take rides from a stranger or help them look for a lost pet. Make sure children know their complete name, their parent's name, and how to contact a parent in an emergency. Keep an updated schedule of children's activities and know who they will be with, how to contact them, and when they will return. Finally, make sure children know how to dial 911 if they need help or have an emergency. With school letting out and extra time on kids' hands, practicing these safe summer tips can help kids and families have a safe and enjoyable summer. As we get closer to Independence Day, just a reminder that fireworks are illegal in Tacoma. People caught using fireworks inside the Tacoma city limits can receive a $247 fine as well as having their fireworks confiscated. Skip the fine and start a new tradition this 4th of July. Shared scooters launched in Tacoma on May 25th. The city selected Razor as Tacoma's new micro-mobility vendor. Razor will start with approximately 400 scooters and is permitted for up to 750 scooters with shared scooters available citywide. For more information on where to ride, Razor's access program, where slow speed zones are located, parking as well as frequently asked questions about the program, 
visit the city's website. And finally, red, white, and blue. These simple colors inaugurated the design of the flag of the United States of America on Flag Day, June 14, 1777, as an act of the Second Continental Congress. Flag Day isn't an official federal holiday. The day usually corresponds to National Flag Week, this year from June 14th through the 20th. What does the, the flag and Flag Day mean to me personally and to AMVETS? Well, I'm a veteran, so I have to answer that by framing it with the other holidays it's tied to. Armed Forces Day, the third Saturday in May, who that day honors are those currently serving in our military. Then Memorial Day, the last Monday in May, when we remember those who gave their lives while serving our country in uniform. These bring me to Flag Day, the 14th of June, the United States flag, and why we honor it on this day, because of what it represents us and everything we hold dear, our families, our homes, our brothers and sisters in arms, and the united communities of states that make up our great nation. This is also why we will stand for it, we serve under it, and are willing to give our lives for it because it represents the United States of America. There's argument on who actually designed Old Glory, not to mention how the flag morphed over the years due to the addition of so many states. You'll probably be seeing more stars and stripes flying over Tacoma in the coming weeks. That's all the time we have on this edition of Tacoma Report. A great way to find out about the services the City of Tacoma has to offer is by going to cityoftacoma.org. Until next time, I'm Angie Foster. Thanks for watching.